Mr. President, I come to the floor today to support a number of our nominees for ambassadors and positions within the State Department. As the chair of the European Affairs Subcommittee, I am particularly concerned about the number of openings we have in Europe for ambassadorial um, nomin for ambassadors. Um, so I, I want to support today Mark Gittenstein, again, to be U.S. Ambassador to the European Union, Kent Logsdon to be U.S. Ambassador to Moldova, Michael Murphy to be U.S. Ambassador to Bosnia and Herzegovina, Claire Cronin to be U.S. Ambassador to Ireland, Denise Bauer to be U.S. Ambassador to France and Monaco, and Julissa Reynoso to be Ambassador to Spain and Andorra. So those are the ambassadors in Europe that I wanted to raise this afternoon. But I also want to raise concern about Rufus Gifford, who has been nominated to be Chief of Protocol for the Department of State. As I said, I'm chair of the European Subcommittee. And so I've had the opportunity to attend the hearings for these nominees and to see just how qualified they are and how important to American foreign policy they are. Earlier this week, Victoria Newland, who was an undersecretary at the Department of State, testified in front of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee that the United States foreign diplomacy is operating at quarter power as a consequence of the numerous holds that have been placed on ambassadorial appointments by just a few of our Republican colleagues. I have some maps here that I think really very vividly demonstrate the consequences of this inaction in the Senate. The first, you want to give me the first map first? The first map shows where we have U.S. ambassadors to Europe. So you can see anything blue is where we have ambassadors. So on this map, everything from Spain to Ukraine, the United Kingdom, Iceland, Ireland, we have no U.S. ambassadors approved in those countries. And compare that to what Russia and China have in terms of their diplomatic ability in Europe. This gold color are Russian ambassadors, countries where Russia has their ambassadors, virtually every country in Europe. Red is where China has its ambassadors, virtually every country in Europe. And again, in the United States, our ambassadors in Europe, it's basically empty. Finland, Sweden, Norway, Spain, France, Germany, Poland, Ireland, the EU. We are desperately in need of ambassadors because right now we have very little presence in Europe. And this is happening at a time when we know there are significant challenges taking place in Europe, particularly in Ukraine, where Russia is threatening to invade Ukraine, its sovereign territory, again, and where we need, if we're going to be successful in responding to Russia, where we need to take a unified approach among our allies. We need to be working with the EU, with um, NATO, with all of our European allies, and yet in most of the countries, where we need to be working, we don't have ambassadors. And we don't have ambassadors because of opposition from just a few of our Republican colleagues. And I see Senator Cruz on the floor, so I know that he's going to be here to object to my effort to move these. Um, but this is the impact of what's happening as the result of your holds, Senator Cruz. We can't put our national security in the hands of those people who don't have the status of ambassadors. 
We know that our embassies are doing a great job in all of those countries. They're working hard. But it makes a difference to have someone who's been approved by the Senate, who's been nominated by the President, who has the rank of ambassador. And, you know, as I think about the challenges that are facing this country, I can't think of anything that is more harmful to our foreign policy than deliberately hampering this country's ability to advance American interests on the international stage. Um, I want to say a few words about each of these nominees before I move for unanimous consent. And again, I'd like to begin with Mark Gittenstein, who's already served our nation before. He was the U.S. Ambassador to Romania. He has spent over 25 years working on energy issues, and as we think about the negotiations that are happening around energy and Nord Stream 2 in particular, which I know is a concern for Senator Cruz because it's a concern that I have, we don't have an ambassador to the EU at the table for those discussions. And Mr. Gittenstein's nomination is critically important in responding to Russia's weaponization of gas flows to Europe and strengthening the transatlantic Un alliance as we face escalating aggression from Russia. And similarly, Kent Logston's nomination as ambassador to Moldova couldn't come at a more critical moment where Russia is again using energy there as a weapon. Maya Sandu, the newly elected pro-EU, pro-reform president there, has every intention of steering Moldova, the poorest country in Europe, toward a better path. And she's looking west to do that. But of course, she's already faced pressure from Putin and his cronies who have threatened to weaponize gas flows into Moldova. We can't allow Moldova to become the next Ukraine or the next Georgia. And we can only prevent that by conveying strong US leadership to support its pro-European aspirations. I also want to say a few words on Michael Murphy's nomination as ambassador to Bosnia and Herzegovina. America played a critical role in bringing peace to Bosnia through the Dayton Accords. But we're seeing now that peace and stability in Bosnia, unity in, Bos in Bosnia, are under increasing attack. Yes. Earlier today, I had, <coughs> excuse me, I had a chance to meet with the Bosnian foreign minister. And I am seriously concerned by the deteriorating political situation there. It requires an expert career diplomat like Michael Murphy to provide the commanding leadership to help Bosnia through this moment. The same is true in Ireland. <coughs> My allergies are getting the best of me today. Cronin's nomination as ambassador to Ireland is not just a symbolic gesture to a long-standing ally of the United States. Peace in Northern Ireland is hanging by a thread as the UK, Ireland, and the EU handle the fallout from Brexit. I was concerned by the release of a report on Tuesday which indicated that the paramilitary gangs embedded in Northern Ireland's divided communities pose, and I quote, a clear and present danger of violence fueled by post-Brexit tensions. By stalling our confirmation of Ms. Cronin, we risk tarnishing our legacy and fostering peace in Northern Ireland through the Good Friday Agreement. And of course, Denise Bauer's nomination to France is necessary as the country prepares for national elections next year. These elections have significant implications for our bilateral relationship, in addition to the role that France will play in the EU and NATO. Similarly, Julissa Reynoso's nomination to Spain requires swift confirmation. Spain will host the Madrid summit next year, where NATO will elect the next Secretary General and finalize the strategic concept. What happens in NATO is critical to America's national security. And we want to have an ambassador on the ground there who can monitor what's going on with those talks, in addition to the other officials we need to send. Finally, Ambassador Rufus Gifford 
has been nominated to be the Chief of Protocol for the Department of State. He previously served as our Ambassador to Denmark, where, queen, where the Queen there acknowledged him for his meritorious service to the Kingdom of Denmark. His background and service will make him an excellent Chief of Protocol, and we urgently need him in place to assist Secretary Blinken. Combined, these nominations are all critical to immediate challenges facing our national security interests. So with that in mind, Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that notwithstanding Rule 22, the Senate proceed to executive session to consider the following nominations. Executive calendars number 320, 440, 447, 448, 450, 454, and 519, that the Senate vote on the nominations en bloc without intervening action or debate, that the motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate, that any statements related to the nominations be printed in the record, and that the President be immediately notified of the Senate's action and the Senate resume legislative session. 